Hi, this week's Weekly Roundup, we're seeing lots of FPGA boards, more ESPs and the demise of a polymath inventor, and some guy getting annoyed at caloric theory. Who the heck are they? Not many things on Kickstarter this week. If you're going to DEF CON at the end of July this year in the States, you can pick up an unofficial DEF CON 2017 badge on Kickstarter for around 45 US dollars. This next campaign is a small one from someone who's created 22 already on Kickstarter. It's a simple board that provides regulated 3.3 and 5 volt outputs from a mechanical crank, allowing you to power an Arduino or even a Raspberry Pi. It's a great idea. While we're on the topic of alternative power, here's another Kickstarter for a solar powered battery management board capable of providing a 1 amp charge current for LiPos as well as a constant 1 amp 5 volt USB port. You can query the board from a USB port so you can shut down safely when battery is low. The decaf is a smart LCD screen that's based on the Pixel, which is an interpreted language that allows you to build real-time control applications. This first batch of boards are based on a Cortex-M3 with SPI flash, LCD touchscreen and USB that allows you to interact with sensors, buttons and switches. While surprisingly, over at Indiegogo, there is this IoT development kit that comes in three flavors, the Intu Robot Fig, Fox, and Ant. The Fig contains an ESP32, CP2104 chip, and light sensor. The Fox is the same, but with an STM32 and SIM800C GSM module, while the Ant uses an STM32 along with a LoRa module. All of them have UFL antenna connectors, as well as onboard antennas and break out all the GPIOs from the MCUs. They also have an API that works with their Intu Robot Cloud service that allows you to code and program from the internet. And there's a couple of things on Crowd Supply this week, but I've only included one in this video. The Nano EVB is yet another FPGA board. This one is based on the Xilinx Artix FPGA in a handy M2 key format. This will be one to watch when it goes live. So you would have heard by now how Intel has taken a step back from the maker market by end of lifing the Galileo, Joule and Edison boards. A bit of a shame really, however they are continuing on with their Curie, which is good news for Udo since their x86 board has only just come out with a Curie. The results from the Hackerboard survey are out. No surprise the Raspberry Pi is dominating the top three spots. However, it's clear that the x86 camp has started to make a dent in the mainly ARM based lineup. I'm predicting that by next year we'll be seeing at least three x86 boards on this top list, and possibly four. So if you're watching this video sometime in 2018, you can either laugh at me hysterically or nod in agreement. Back in a previous weekly roundup, I mentioned the Dart 6UL board that was selling for around 24 US dollars. Now we have the Dart 6UL 5G which adds a dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Olimex now have a fairly cheap ESP32 based board that provides not only the onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, but a 100 megabit ethernet port and micro SD slot. It's aimed at people wanting to create IoT gateways. This is one topic we were recently talking about on the Micmac Patreon Slack channel. Microsoft is starting to be one of the cool guys again and have released the MX chip IoT developer kit. This board contains an EMW3166 Wi-Fi module, STM32, OLED display, audio processing chip, and a whole bunch of sensors all running off a USB port. If you want to get a preview board for free, then you can sign up here. The ICE0 is yet another FPGA board hitting the market. This one is based on the Lattice ICE 40HX and is designed to fit onto a Raspberry Pi Zero. This means you can do all your development right from the Pi Zero. The only issue I see is that they haven't broken out all the GPIOs that this FPGA is capable of. Olimax has also joined in with a bunch of boards based on this same FPGA, but this one has a handy edge connector that allows you to slot in a range of add-ons, such as this ADC board, DAC boards, and analog and digital I.O. boards. I saw over at CNX Software that the Infor 6309 SPC is on sale at the moment. All you have to do is enter in SUMMER as the discount code on checkout and you can pick one up for only 89 US dollars. Nice. The Telco Orange must have read too many kids books as they've just released a board called the LoRa Explorer Kit. 
It is on the expensive side, but for around 85 euros, you get a SAM D21, RN2483 LoRa module, RN4871 Bluetooth module, Atmel crypto chip, four megabit flash and rechargeable LiPo coin cell. You also get six months free access to Orange's cloud service. While a different kind of Orange company seems to have found a large stock of mobile phone screens and have released them as an add-on for your Orange Pi 2G IoT. So Tindy has some pretty good stuff again this week. This one looks pretty cool. It's an ESP8266 with OLED that allows you to do funky things like monitor the number of packets being sent on a Wi-Fi network. It's not limited to one network either. Good tool for checking Wi-Fi accessibility while on the run. If you have a product that needs haptic feedback, then this Tindy store has several kits ranging from this ERM haptic pack with eight arrays and 10 vibrators, or this piezo based pack with four drivers and 10 piezos, or this LRA pack with four drivers and five LRAs. They seem pretty expensive, but you're getting a lot within each pack. I haven't seen many LPC1768 based boards around. This one has the Cortex M3 MCU, USB JTAG connectors running off a nine volt one amp DC jack and breaking out pretty much all the GPIOs on this MCU. This is a simple but neat idea. This guy has taken several Adafruit MEMS mics and embedded them in resin to make them waterproof. Great idea if you have them exposed to the elements. And Red Hunter is back again with an update to his Octo Sonar. Version 2 now has better signal processing, a better library, and 3.3 volt logic level support. ESP Everywhere is now on Tindy. This was a Kickstarter campaign that ended up being fairly popular. This is just for the plain board, where you'll have to try your hand at soldering SMDs. And this board is pretty simple, but something that you'll really need if you're wanting to get into retro arcade machines. It allows you to easily connect up joysticks and buttons to an Arduino. And this board is useful if you're doing any diagnostics on a USB bus. It allows you to insert an amp meter and connect up logic probes to the USB plus and minus signals. Over at Seed Studio, they have an SDR that is capable of operating between 1 kHz to 2 GHz. It has a number of other features like 10 preset filters, low noise preamp, 10 MHz bandwidth, and running the SDR UNO software. They also have several Artix kits, like this 053 starter kit in an Arduino form factor, or this 530 starter kit with an onboard 4 core Cortex A9 and 512 MB RAM, or this 710 starter kit with an onboard 8 core Cortex A53 with 1 GB RAM and 4 GB flash. All three provide you with connectivity to Wi Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, and Thread networks and sometimes you just have no choice but to use VGA. This handy box from Adafruit converts a VGA input signal into HDMI out. Nice. While over at SparkFun, they have the Tiny Tile, which is a Curie-based board, probably the smallest Curie board I've seen. For those who don't know about the Intel Curie, it's a dual-core MCU with a small x86 quark and arc cores, running at 32 MHz with 384 kilobytes flash 80 kilobytes RAM, Bluetooth, 6 DOF IMU, and onboard PMIC. It's a pretty cool chip. Glad Intel didn't get rid of it. If you have a micro bit, then SparkFun have a couple of add-ons. Has onboard temperature, humidity, pressure, and light sensors, and connectors for wind speed, rainfall, and soil sensors. Or this Moto bit board, which has two H bridges allowing control over DC or stepper motors. Also has onboard battery management. Over at DF Robot, they have a fairly cheap IR based scanner that can scan up to 120 degrees at 170 milliseconds every 60 degrees, with a 100 to 800 millimeter range. And prices of laser rangefinders are getting lower and lower. 139 US dollars is still a fair whack, but the TF01 has a range of up to 10 meters at 500 hertz sampling frequency. Looks like DigiKey will be getting in the Digilent open scope soon which was a successful Kickstarter campaign. No info on pricing yet, however. And Pi Moroni have a neat Pi Zero based e-ink display that's capable of displaying red, black, and of course white at 212 by 104 pixels. They have a fairly decent Python library as well. While over in China, Banggood have a bunch of cheap passive component boxes ranging from capacitors, transistors, and resistors and this Wemos ESP32 board with LiPo battery management, breaking out all the GPIOs. 
If you buy your ESP32s as bare modules, then you really need to get one of these. Just plonk your ESP module in and program away. Got a bunch of transistors that you don't know if they work or not. This transistor tester looks decent, although I haven't yet tried it out. Runs off a 6 to 12 volt DC supply and has a snazzy LCD display for testing NPNs, PNPs, FETs, diodes, thyristors and SCRs. I think I might just pick one of these up. The PAM8610 is a step up from the PAM8403s. Runs off a 6 to 15 volt supply, so isn't quite suitable for MCU work, but is more responsive than the 8403s. Now, I've just got to get myself one of these. This is a full coin slot mechanism with control board as you'd find on vending machines. It's actually a time control board, but I reckon I'll be able to retrofit it onto an ESP and a mechanical lock so I can charge my teenagers every time they open the fridge door. Nice, that's a good idea, isn't it? IC Station have a neat CC2640 based Bluetooth board, which is similar to the CC240, but with a faster MCU, more flash, and GPIOs. Now this is another cool toy. This is a vehicle detector used in parking lots to highlight free car spots. I wouldn't mind getting one of these, so I can check if any cars are in my driveway before I even get home. There's also this cheaper module. You would have seen the X800 SATA expansion board in my previous weekly roundup. DX now I have the X820, which is similar to the X800, but with an additional USB 3 port. Not sure that's going to help, as it's sitting on a USB hub, but anyway. There's also the X850, which is designed for mSATA drives. It's basically a USB 2.0 to mSATA converter in a format that can easily attach to a Pi. Thanks for watching this week's roundup. As always, links are on my website and there's a handy index in the description below. If you like these weekly roundups, then you can support me on Patreon, which allows me to keep everything running. I have to hand it to all my current patrons who have been steadily supporting me. They're all a great bunch of people and you can get to meet them on my Slack channel when you become a patron. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week.